have a problem? No, everything is fine. We are back on track. My name is Larissa Sansour. I'm a visual artist. I come from uh, Bethlehem originally and I left Palestine when I was 15 to continue studying art in London, uh, New York and Copenhagen. So I haven't been living in Palestine for that long but I come uh, back and forth to uh, work on projects here. I work mostly with uh, photography and uh, film, uh, so, so I mostly work with installations of, of both mediums, but I use any medium that kind of uh, fulfills the concept, so the concept is really first and foremost what's important. Right now I'm working on a new project called In the Future They Ate from the Finest Porcelain and it's a, uh, a project that addresses ar the archaeology war between Israel and Palestine. There's so much uh, excavation going on uh, to prove uh, that um, there was a, always a Jewish presence and, and this is something that nobody really debates but that is just causing lots of problems on the ground. Um, and it, and it just shows how archaeology has been instrumentalized to kind of prove a point rather than uh, being used as a scientific method. Uh, so it is part of the propaganda machine to be uh, using archaeology in that way. So in, in the film that I'm working on now, it kind of talks academically about what, um, what problems we are facing as Palestinians. And I bring... Um, uh, it, quite um, a few elements from my last project, Nation Estate, which is fictional, and bring these uh, porcelain pieces that are fictional that have the kafiya, which is a symbol of uh, Palestinian identity, uh, and bury them in the ground in a secret location in Palestine uh, for future archaeologists to find. So it's kind of a comment that if uh, if um, our existence is not acknowledged now, maybe in the future we will preserve like a, a DNA, our cultural DNA for future archaeologists to find. Bethlehem. I come originally from Bethlehem and every time I come back home I see that it's being choked more and more by the settlements that are surrounding it in one big circle. So they're moving in on the city as a big army and, and constantly uh, grabbing more land and uh, the international community is not doing anything about it. We know that settlements are illegal but they still uh, keep on expanding. With the rate that, is that the settlements are expanding and the rate by which Israel is grabbing more Palestinian land, sometimes it makes me wonder what a viable Palestinian state, if we ever get one, would look like. And since uh, it seems to have a true and viable Palestinian state horizontally doesn't make sense, I kind of wanted to have a, a satirical take on the whole situation by building a one long huge skyscraper where the whole Palestinian um, population will be uh, housed. And of course it is funny that uh, people can take an elevator to go from one city to another because each floor has uh, a different Palestinian cities. 
But at the same time, this convenience that Palestinians get from this uh, futuristic skyscraper is nothing more than, you know, living in one big prison. So it came out of what's really happening on the ground, and it's kind of a comment on that if we uh, allow things to continue the way they are uh, going right now uh, uh, on the ground, that things will just look absurd and that's the only, then that would be the only solution and that is just a very tragic uh, solution. that you usually see from Palestine are usually of destruction, of, uh, of war. And so a very clear idea of what's really going on and, and what daily life is about is, is not coherent for, uh, for an audience. When I first started working with uh, video, I used to do a lot of short documentaries about Palestine because I felt that the situation was urgent, I needed the world to know what's going on. And I felt that there is uh, a fatigue of what's been going on in the news because uh, the world has been exposed to the Palestinian problem. It's been going on for many, many years. That people are just tired and there's an they have developed an immunity. So. I use sci-fi and fiction in a way to try to re-engage with the same topics but in a completely different way because I think that it is tiring for, for people to always look at uh, Palestine in this documentary sort of way and also I think it, is, uh, it always puts the Palestinian in a very disadvantaged role. What's happening in Palestine is so surreal that sometimes it feels reality is more surreal than uh, fiction itself. So I usually, I think sometimes it's more honest for me to resort to fiction than to, to really do documentary. I mean, often people don't really believe me when I do documentary because they just think I'm kind of working with propaganda. There is something very easy uh, with science fiction. I think it's very reflective of Palestinian history funnily enough, but I think that um, the, the Palestinian identity has always been kind of tied to the fact that they have been done wrong. They, they talk a lot about Al-Nakba uh, in 1948, and the, the basic, which means the catastrophe that um, when Israel was formed. Uh, and this kind of identity has followed Palestinians until this day, so Palestinians always think of themselves as victims and cannot get out of that role. So we're kind of stuck in the past, but we're also always projecting the future. So uh, in a way, that's how sci-fi feels, because sci-fi is always has a retro element. It always kind of, we always think about space in the same way. a lot with the political problem, uh, specifically in Palestine, but also overall in the Middle East. I don't think that the Palestinian problem is a local problem. I think it's the source of problems for the uh, so many world problems that if 
it should be a concern for, for the world. I, I feel I'm very engaged with what's going on around me and since what's going on around me is uh, very much what defines my existence such as uh, my identity, my passport, the control that's being uh, imposed on me and, and uh, the control when I'm traveling from one place to another uh, it becomes something that I cannot disengage myself from so politics is something that's not just a privilege it is something that I just am forced to talk about all the time and it would be dishonest for me not to talk about politics in my own work I think there's a difference between uh, the perception of my work abroad than it is in, in Palestine. I think Palestinians uh, are not afraid to laugh at what I'm uh, working on, whereas say when I show it in Europe and the US, uh, my work usually, because it uses a lot of irony, uh, makes people uncomfortable because they, they do kind of, if, if they do know about what's going on in Palestine, they feel sorry for uh, the situation and therefore they feel that they don't have the privilege to laugh. Whereas in, in Palestine, I think people have developed this sense of absurdity because they need to deal with occupation on a daily basis and therefore they're much more willing to take the absurdity and, and laugh at what they see. So it's kind of, I think, when I show my work in Palestine, it feels more therapeutic for the audience as opposed to kind of informative. I obviously am much more concerned about uh, delivering what's happening in Palestine to a, a Western audience uh, because I feel that it's urgent for uh, the West to understand what's really going on in Palestine and that I have a different window that I could offer a new look as to what's going on. I think in that way um, it makes a difference because I'm always looking for very universal um, uh, context to, to put my work in. So my, I often reference uh, American films and, and pop culture and I think it's, it's this universality that's so important for me because it makes uh, the world understand that we're talking about the same issues, that we all belong to the same world.